I'm not sure what I'm doing in circles. One heck of a turn in circles. And I dragged it into that trailer with the cellar uh, on a muddy, dark night. Now I'm going to see it in the light and hopefully it's going to be the answer to what we need. Now whether you've only got a couple of chickens in your back garden or whether you've got a big commercial farm, you'll know that where there's animals, there's feed and where there's feed, there's rats. And it's one thing that you've just got to get on top of because you can let it slip very, very quickly. And for that reason, I need a solution. We want to buy our feed in bulk and we need somewhere to store that. I need to buy a pallet at a time because we've switched from a local supplier, which was conventional normal feed, to a completely British grown, soya free, GM free feed, which is awesome. However, I've got to buy a ton or so at a time to make it worth it, ideally even more. There are lots of solutions for bulk storage of feed, but normally they're three tons or more, and actually the hoppers are quite expensive. What I found on a late night Facebook marketplace scroll uh, is something that should solve it. Well, that was a bit of a challenge. Uh, the forks don't quite get under the whole thing and it seems like the bottom's loose so the forks were just lifting up into it. But let's see what we bought. Well, it matches the tractor. It's red and rusty. It's quite light steel. This is basically, believe it or not, this is an aircraft hanger storage box or transport box. So I guess if you want to get yourself a big steel box, buy yourself an aircraft hanger and it comes free. The guy I bought it from bought an aircraft hanger, polytunnel basically, uh, but much more rigid heavy duty one for storing machinery and lambing and all sorts on his farm. And uh, it came in two of these and he was, he's had them sat for ages and he was selling them. But yeah, they're, they are pretty flimsy, but a hundred quid, what can you, you can't really complain. The other option was to get like an oil tank or something like that, but at least this has been empty. And what are the downsides? Well, I haven't got a hinged lid or anything like that. Uh, and access is going to be an issue. We've got a big chest freezer in the farm shop. We're, we were going to try and replace, and again, it only costs £100. But it's, it's big, but it's nowhere near as big as this. Um, but that would be an option, and it would be quite good for loose feed because you could, you know, you, you can imagine you slide the glass top and you could scoop out. Whereas we need to store about 60 to 80 bagged feed or bags of feed. Um, and this is what I came up with. Just not sure about the floor being strong enough now. So, looks like it's kind of galvanized. Or maybe it's just been dry enough. Yeah, cool, our access is gonna be fun. Now, when I saw them, I thought we could leave it outside but I think it would take quite a lot of sealing and things like that to, to get it weathertight enough and the water would probably pool on top. We cut some boards, I've got some thick two inch timber boards. If we sit there in the bottom, they'll just catch the end bearer. They'll rest on the middle one and go to the other side. Hey, I... No, it's for putting feed bags of feed in to store. First things first, let's get a couple of big thick boards down on the ground to make sure that the feet are fully supported. We, I tried with the digger to level it out a bit, but I need to spend a proper day on it to get all this replaced with some crushed concrete, which we luckily have coming because we've got about 200 tons of the stuff to crush. Sometimes you just, 
freaky things happen. I've got a load of these boards here, which are super solid. They're left over from the cabin. And whatever we cut those to, to equal three meters for our floor framing, are exactly flush, look. Even accounts for the thickness of the steel. Absolutely bob on. I don't know about you, but I think that's a pretty solid result. So they, they bear basically where these angles are. Um, so we're, we're well supported all the way along. It's basically a two inch timber floor with a rat proof layer bar that below it. Uh, we just, well, that's going to help me get in and out a bit. But what I'm thinking is by the time you stack some feed in here, you'll only need a bit of a step ladder to lean over, grab a bag, and if you ever need to get in, well, you won't be stepping all the way down to here because there's always going to be bags one end. I mean, getting on for three pallets in size, so easily get two in here. And of course, we want to make sure we rotate the feed round. We should be able to have pig feed, chicken feed, and sheep slash goat slash calf rearer, which is the feed we use for the goats. How rat proof are we now? I mean, I think this side's fine. Maybe, maybe. But because we're completely covered here, it might be that we can just leave it like it is and see how we get on. No in rats though, they'll be paratrooping in or something. Definitely not the most uh, seamless setup, but it'll do us for now. Mm, that's 300 or so kilo of chicken feed. We've got loads of space. This thing is massive. Once we know where we want the feed to go, and we know it's always going to be there, it kind of makes sense to make a brick or a block work bay that we can just back in a pallet, three pallets side by side, make sure it's got a roof and some vermin proof doors, and just maybe that's the answer. So then we wouldn't have to double hand, let alone triple handle everything. I mean, yes, we could take the front, make the front removable and do all sorts of modifications, but by the time we spent a day on messing with this thing, you may as well have made something purpose built. Audrey is going to stay there for the night, um, but as far as the lambing area, the emergency backup lambing area, I think it's going to be just fine. So I've got these, I mean, these are cow gates, that's why they're wider spacings, but I've got hurdles I can put against them. So I've hurdles along. Um, I can close that one over, then the aim would be just to have probably two hurdled pens so that as and when they lamb, they can go in there one day max, then they can go out into the paddock, which is right outside the windows anyway, so we can see what's going on. But hopefully we don't need to worry about that. Worry Alright, this is a preschool like arrival. Look at the others. But she's the first time, I think. Hey, this lamb with malarkey outside is a good, good one, isn't it? Yeah, she's quite small. And the feeding. She's not as sure about the feeding, but... Well, she won't be yet, but... She's getting there. The grandmothers all go into... The it's like the N NCT group. They're all just saying hello. Well done for walking down there, because I looked out 
and I didn't think there was any reason I was going to get in the shower. It's pretty muddy, that route, by the way. But. That's it. One heck of a turning circle. The final bit of farm DIY this week was to move the chicken run from the top paddock where it sat for about a year because it was our run that we used during the avian flu sort of flock down a couple of years ago. Uh, but now we're going to repurpose it. It's going to become a, sort of a demo display area for some of our chickens that we've now got for sale. So fortunately I had a hand because Scott was up giving me a hand on the actual build and we decided that we would take a break from that to, re to make this down, uh, cut this down a little bit so it's a smaller build so it would fit on top of an existing slab around in the lower yard and we managed to kind of rig it up on top of the wheelbarrow and manoeuvre it through all the yards and it will now just need a little bit of tweaking to get it ready and this is what we got up to. And there we go, that is the display pen all finished. I've got the netting to go back up on top and we're using one of the segments from the long pig arc in there as a shelter. We probably won't have birds in here overnight, but in the weekends when we've got people coming to view and select their birds, this is the perfect place to do it. So there we go, that's the little update, but don't worry, there is a huge amount of lambing content on the way. Joe's been busy getting all those edited and in the next week we'll be sharing some of our new arrivals. The little one in this video was just one that happened to come a couple of weeks early because that cheeky ram lamb jumped the fence. Thanks for watching, take care and we'll see you next time.